Hey guys, Nephi here. Thank you so much for clicking on this. I am an accountant turned entrepreneur and blogger and I blog at exportfreedomnation.com. Today, I'm so excited to talk to you about what to do when there's chaos in the world. Uh, hey guys, um, I forgot to mention that I am currently in Kent at my parents' house, so all my like YouTube recording equipment is at my place in London. So I'm doing a visual um, video this week because I might be doing this going forward until I get back to my place in London because I'm currently under lockdown. I can't really leave the house for non-essential travel. So if this video is a bit different than normal, it's just because... I'm not in my normal place of residence. I'm recording this in March 2020 and coronavirus has just shut down the world in the simplest terms. But regardless of the chaos of the moment, these will apply at some point in your life. Whether it's a virus, a recession, terrorism, or something else going on in the world, sometimes we enter a season where things are uncertain, scary, and even tragic. This is the most important time to manage your mind. Here's how you can manage your mind during this season, or any season, where you're experiencing uncertainty, fear, or loss. Number one, write down everything that's going on in your mind. The first part of managing your mind is to write down all the thoughts you have. Get it all out there. Just go on a rant without lifting your pen about everything that's going on in your mind. Don't judge yourself here. Approach yourself with curiosity, compassion, and love. Do this for as much as you need to, anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. Number two, separate out the facts from the thoughts. So after you've done step one, separate out all the facts and write them down on a separate page. The facts will be boring. For example, I have coronavirus or I don't. The kids are off school for three weeks or they are not. There won't be words like devastation or catastrophe or terrible. The facts are what I like to call the maths. They're just facts. So be careful that when you're describing stats that appear to be facts but could be skewed. So just be very, very methodical about it. So number three, notice your brain go to the worst case scenario. So your brain is wired for survival. It's its primitive job to keep you safe and alive. It's normal to default to worry and extremes. Um, when left unmanaged, your brain will objectify other humans. It will indulge in fear. It will default to fight or flight mode. It's the protective mechanism. Your brain freaks out at the unknown. It can't handle it, but it's a lie. It's just trying to protect you. It doesn't understand that you can always protect yourself. So don't have to be panicking or worrying around ever. No, also notice that your brain is going to look for evidence of what you already want to believe. So it could be become obsessed with researching and trying to find out more information. This is an effort to feel more in control. Again, that is totally normal during uncertain times. So let's remember our survival primitive brain is like a toddler with like a butter knife. It means well, but unsupervised, it can cause chaos. Number four is give yourself worry time if you need it. Don't resist the urge to worry, but don't indulge in it either. We love to become addicted to our problems. So you can give yourself worry time every day if you need it. This may look like every day for 20 minutes in the morning, you allow yourself to worry about everything and anything. Number five is add constraints to your media inputs. That could be TV, podcast, radio, etc. Limit the amount of media you consume per day. You may want to be educated and informed, and I do too, but limit that input time per day to a certain number of minutes. For example, you might allow yourself to watch 13 minutes or one hour of the news every morning or evening, and that's it. Then you stay informed but aren't consumed by the conversation every day. Also, I highly recommend balancing your news intake with an equal amount of positive media intake. So that could be a podcast, it could be an audio book, it could be something funny, like if you just want to laugh. Um, but just remember that your brain needs to be inundated with positive thoughts just as much as it needs to know the facts. Number six, don't escape your life with food, alcohol or shopping. 
I am so guilty of this. Like I've been eating junk pretty much like anything. <laughs> I've been eating stuff that I wouldn't normally eat. So I haven't had Watsits in years, but in the last month, I think I've had like two bags a day. So that's not, it's not good. <laughs> so um, it's really tempting to escape your life during hard times because the negative emotion is so strong that you want to indulge in external pleasures to feel better. Don't do this. Like this is what I'm noticing myself. You'll learn that afterwards you feel worse once a short term high has worn off. Instead, learn how to feel your negative emotions and process the urge. So plan your pleasure. So food, alcohol and spending ahead of time. It's easy to overeat, overdrink and overspend in an effort to feel better. But the long term effects on this um, on your health will be negative and also on your finances so it won't serve you and um, this is not something I'm just saying to you guys this is what I'm telling myself as well when I want to reach for that bag of what's it as I said earlier like I'm at my parents house and my parents house is just like on a normal day my mum will have food to last like three months so I'm overindulging and I have to sort of speak to myself daily and be like no you can't keep doing this <laughs> so I'm in the same boat as you so you need to notice this about yourself now and which pleasures you prefer. Then put constraints in your life to make sure you don't escape the negative feelings. So number seven is decide how you want to feel and think ahead of time. So I say this a lot, um, but I'm going to say that again. Your thoughts cause your feelings. This isn't dependent on what's going on in the world. So you can decide on purpose what you want to think and feel about coronavirus or any other chaotic situation that you're going through. You don't have to feel worried, panicked or afraid. You can choose to feel calm, at peace and content. It doesn't make you irresponsible. It doesn't mean you don't care. It just means that you can care on purpose. You can feel good and still do your part. Worrying isn't helping anyone. Number eight is pay attention to your thoughts. So when your circumstances are something other than what you want, it's extremely important to pay attention to your thoughts. This increases your awareness of your thoughts and allows you to choose what to think and feel on purpose. So this is sort of related to number seven, um, but I want to give you some thoughts that aren't useful as well as thoughts that are useful so you can see the difference. Non-useful thoughts are things like I'm unprepared. This is horrific. The world is devastated. This shouldn't be happening. People are scared and now I'm nervous. The world has gone mad. <laughs> I have said that myself, so no judgment, people. <laughs> there are so many communities struggling because of this. I don't know how people will manage this. People are going to lose their minds. This is getting dangerous. We are in a global crisis. I'm worried about the future. I'm going to run out of X, Y, Z. The economy is in trouble. Everyone is losing money. It's going to be a very long time before we all recover. Some useful thoughts are, it's time to pause. I'm prepared for today. I'm safe. My family is safe. My brain doesn't like the unknown and that's okay. I can do my part to help without being scared. There's always more money. It was always supposed to happen this way. I was made for this. There is no rush. I have more time with my family. This is an opportunity for me to practice transitioning. We're not going to run out of what we need. I'm getting stronger because of this. I can care deeply about this without worrying. Panic isn't useful here. I care about my health, my family's well-being and the world. It's safe to have fun right now. So number nine is focus on what you can control and practice self-care. So during a transition, our brain looks for ways to have control, which of course is impossible. But to appease your brain, you can do things in your daily routine that will satisfy the control urge. So here are my best self-care tips that will give you a sense of certainty and control during this time of transition. So for example, you could create a new routine based on the new circumstances. For example, if you're working from home and the kids are home from school, you can start having lunch together from 12 to 1 p.m. every day. Another thing you can do is say what you're grateful for every morning. So starting your day in a state of appreciation will change the entire day for you. Um, you can also dress up in nice clothes and put on makeup 
daily. So this includes even when you're working from home. Um, another thing you can do is exercise daily. So even going for a walk from like 5.30 to 6 p.m. can be enough. And another thing is coach yourself daily. So I have a post called um, which do you think is possible for your future and it's all about the self-coaching model and i will put a link to that below number 10 is look for positive ways to connect with people so we love to connect with people over our problems um during a time of distress limit how much you focus on conversations on what's going on in the world it's one thing to get new information and to stay up to date it's another thing to talk about how worried you are and how you're all going to die immediately. Like, I love because even though with all my personal development, I did have a time of being like, we're all going to die, we're all going to die. And my mum had to check me and had to be like, no, speak positive words. And so, yeah, what we talk about matters. So use your time with others to have compassion and spread more love than fear. Number 11 is... Pay attention to your feelings driving your actions. Whenever you take an action, it's because of how you feel. That feeling can either be positive or negative. It can be useful or not useful. So for example, let's say you're intentionally washing your hands a lot during this coronavirus outbreak. Are you washing your hands because one, you're afraid of getting sick and from a state of panic, or two, because you want to practice and attract good health? The difference is everything. For all the decisions you make during this time, think about the emotional state you're in when you're making these decisions. The more you can calm yourself down and get into a better state, the better, more thoughtful decisions you'll make. Making a decision from fear is like never a good idea. So don't do it. <laughs> Making a decision from a state of calm is always a good idea. So when you're in an emotional state of panic, fear or worry, you take actions from that place you're creating more panic fear and worry and it will all compound if it's health and well-being you want then focus on being healthy focus on spreading love and appreciation and on what's good about being healthy notice that this will be hard if you've been in a state of negative emotion because it's easier to continue with the emotions you've been feeling than it is to change the thoughts and feelings so if you want to attract health you must get into a healthy state of mind first that is the best thing you can do and then you can take action from there what we tend to do is focus on the disease instead of health. We have a war on terrorism, a war on drugs, and fight against X, Y, Z. While well intended, these focuses and creates more of the very thing that we don't want. This isn't useful and it doesn't get us what we want. Um, a book that I read and watched a movie of a few years ago was The Secret, and that talks about the law of attraction and something i recommend so number 12 is acknowledge the resistance during this time of transition so whenever something new and different happens that takes us off our normal course of things there's enormous resistance this is because the path of least resistance is to keep doing what we've always done it's very easy to keep doing the same routine because your brain has the momentum of it it's really efficient and easy because it can do it on autopilot so when something like coronavirus changes the path you're on, it creates resistance. When there is resistance, there is a lot of negative emotion. We don't like change, especially when it's change we didn't have a say in. So be on your brain with this, like allow the transition. Pause with yourself. Pause with the world. Notice that the transition is full of resistance and that's okay. There will always be a change in the path, a new way. And it was unexpected. It's only a problem if you tell yourself it's a problem. This can be an opportunity for you to practice resilience and service to the world. Number 13 is remember circumstances are neutral. And that means that you have all the power. So remember how I had you separate out the facts from thoughts in the beginning of this before talking about what's on your brain? Well, that's because I want you to really see your circumstances are 100% neutral, not a little bit neutral, not neutral unless it's coronavirus neutral. I'm talking all the time neutral. This means that your circumstances are the facts, such as coronavirus, the stock market going down, and kids being off school or events being cancelled are all neutral. 
You have the power to think anything you want about your circumstances. If this is a completely new concept to you, check out the post that I put in the link below about how to improve your mindset. And also, the future is positive and it's all about the self-coaching model. So this doesn't mean separating yourself from others and telling them they're wrong for thinking what they're thinking. It means having compassion and love for people who are just trying to figure it out, just like you. Then deciding on purpose, what you want to believe, and believing hard whatever thought you want about it. This is power, guys. You. <laughs> like, imagine if we all focus on health and wellness during coronavirus. Imagine if we all focus on love and community during a terrorist attack. Imagine if we all have the awareness of our own primitive brains and talked to ourselves and got into a state to feel better and then took action from there. Like, worrying feels necessary here, but it really isn't. So, you know, just, just be on your mind and just notice what you're thinking and coach yourself. Number 14 is whatever your problems is, personal development is the solution. So what's going on in the world today is exactly why everyone needs personal development. So even when there's nothing big going on in the world, there's always problems you're facing in your life. You need personal development to help you manage your mind through all of it all, the big and the small. Personal development can show you your mind. It can show you how to solve problems help you feel better and give you the steps to move forward. I'm thinking of starting a monthly book club where I like, where we get together and we go through a personal development book. I'm um, usually on a topic, so it could be about money, it could be about relationships, it could be about productivity. I have a big library and um, I know some of my friends have always commented on us starting a book club together. So comment below if you think that's a good idea do you want to be part of my monthly book club finally guys i just want to say you've got this so that's my number 15 you have got this there's nothing you can't handle there's nothing you have to worry about worry doesn't make you more responsible you can handle everything that comes your way you were made for this so Control is an illusion. There is no control. Just remember that. So thank you guys so much for listening or watching this. As I said earlier, my name is Nephi. I'm an accountant turned entrepreneur and blogger and I blog at explorefreedomnation.com. And if you liked what you've listened to or watched here, then give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And with that said, I will see you guys in the next video. So bye. Just one more thing, like it's been a bit of a transition for me going from recording videos to doing a voiceover. So is this something, is this a format that you guys like? I would really appreciate your comments below. Just let me know, do you like this format? Because we might have to do this going forward. So I'm really interested in knowing what you think about this.